Hey guys, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and we're continuing on with AP Physics and another, another kinematics uh, question, free response. Again, these questions are from the old AP Physics B exam, so they're not the same, but a lot of the concepts are very similar. You have to know these concepts to do them, um, to do well in the exam. Now, these tests might be more computationally more difficult than um, the AP Physics 1 exam, but it's still good to like know how to do these problems. Like If you can do these problems, you'll be like really set. For the exam so a ball of mass m so that's got a mass m here released from a distance h above a frictionless plane inclined at an angle of 45 degrees horizontal shown below the ball bounces horizontally off the plane with the same speed at which it struck the plane and strikes the plane again at point p2 in terms of g and h determine each of the following columns the speed of the ball just after it first bounces off okay this distance here there's actually a couple ways you can do this through energy but um, if I wanted to just do this straight off through kinematic equations, I would say this equation makes sense. Because I have the height, I know the initial velocity. Oh, actually, I want the final velocity, so maybe I wouldn't use this equation. I don't have the time, so my bad. Let's look at it. I know the final velocity, or that's what I want to solve for. I know the initial velocity, because it's 0, plus 2a delta x okay this is the general equation so vf which is what i'm serving well th this velocity it doesn't have any initial velocity because i'm dropping it plus 2 g h so it's the square root of 2 g h that's what the final that's what the final velocity is here okay so it has a velocity down here 2 g h now you can do this through energy conservation just as a side note if you've learned that point you would know that mgh is equal to one half mv squared because it has all potential energy no kinetic and by the here this this potential energy gets converted to kinetic energy and hence v the m's cancel is the square root of 2gh okay it's the same same thing okay b the time the ball is in flight between point p1 and p2 okay so now we know it comes off with this velocity square root of 2gh and i know like this length here is l and I know it like hits this point. Um, so if I know basically the time the ball is in flight, let's see. The the it has to travel horizontally um, a distance. Of, if this is L, this is L over the square root of two, and vertical because it's forty five degrees. This is L over the square root of two. This is a forty five forty five triangle right here. So vertically has to drop L over the root 2, and horizontally has to go L over root 2. Um, so the time that it's in flight, so this is like sort of the delta Y and delta X. The horizontal distance um, it would travel, L over root 2, is equal to delta X, which is equal simply to the velocity times time, square root of 2GH times T. Okay? So that's that's the x direction, the kinematic equation. It's a constant x direction until it hits the ground. But I don't know what L is, so because I'm just summing for t, I can't put it in terms of L. Um, I don't think, or at least. So the other thing I want to look at is the vertical. Okay, is delta y is equal to um, v naught t plus one half a t squared. Now, the vertical velocity initially is zero because it's all horizontal here. So this part is zero. And in the vertical direction, the only acceleration is g. So it's one half gt squared. And that equals L over the square root of two, right? Now, because the vertical drop and the horizontal travel is the same, I can set them equal to each other. I could say one half gt squared equals square root of two ght, right? Because I have this. This delta x is equal to delta y. So I can have this is equal to this. So one of the t's cancel, um, assuming time isn't 0. Now, it's it's true that they're equal at time equals 0. But assuming t equals 0, I can divide by t. So t is equal to 2 square root of 2gh over g, which is the same as um, 2 root 2. Actually, nope, not quite right. 
um, because I'm dividing by d is 2 square root of 2h over g. All right, that's the time that they're in flight. And so the distance L is easy to figure out. Um, from this equation is probably the most direct one. L over 2, L over root 2, was equal to delta x, which was equal to square root of 2 ght. But now I've solved for the time that it's in flight. So L equals times root 2. So I get 2 root gh times t time times given by 2 square root of 2h over g. Okay, the g, these root g's cancel, and this becomes 4 root 2, because I got a 4 there, root 2, root h times root h is h. So L is 4 square root of 2 of h. Oh, that, this is not b, this is c. Uh, and last, d, what is the speed of all just before it strikes the planet p2? Well, the speed is the scalar quantities, the magnitude of the velocity. I know his velocity here is square root of 2gh, because in the horizontal direction, there's no force to change the velocity. So the question is, is what is his vertical velocity? Once I know the vertical velocity, then I can add these two vectors together. So his vertical velocity in the y is given by, um, well, since it has no in, 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 vertical velocity, I know how, how long it fell for. Um, it's given by the time gt. That would be its vertical velocity. So that would be g times 2 square root of 2h over g. Or 2 root 2 square root of gh. Because that g and that g kind of, this going in there would be g squared, cancels with 1. Okay, so that's its vertical velocity. And this is his, and its vx direction is square root of 2gh. So v, which would be the magnitude of its velocity, vx squared plus vy squared, square root of vx squared is 2gh. vy squared is 4 times, uh, it's this one. Uh, this is 4 to 8 plus 8gh. That's equal to square root of 10gh. Okay? So... Uh, I hope that made sense. Um, please leave a comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next uh, next video. Thanks. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I just want to let you know that I offer free homework help on Twitch or Discord. So uh, just stop on by if you have any homework questions or you just want to learn about different parts of math and physics and hang out. Hope to see you there.